It's a pleasure on behalf of the European Commission of DG Environment, as Director General of DG Environment, to welcome you to the Green Week in Brussels. This year, we are doing a special effort to highlight the importance of the green economy, of green growth, of circular economy, of sustainability. And we are doing something special, and this is why we are so happy to receive you all here, because we are moving the Green Week across Europe. I had the pleasure to start in Ljubljana, the European Green Capital for 2016. And we were opening on Monday, officially, our Green Week. And I received from the children of a school in Ljubljana this bottle. A bottle with a message. With a message of how they would like the world to look like in the coming years. A message for the future generations where they have written their dream for a better quality of life, for a better development, for a better world for all of us. And they asked me to bring it to Brussels. And I wanted to share it with you. I am not going to open the message. We will keep the suspense. Perhaps we read it at the end of our conference. But I wanted to start thanking the city of Ljubljana, who is our green capital 2016, and thanking all the cities, all the local communities, all the societies which are doing an important effort towards a greener economy, towards a better quality of life for our citizens. I will put the bottle here and proceed. Now, this, year, this year's theme of our Green Week is investing for a greener future. Why investing? Why a greener future? The reason is we believe that conducting environmental policies, sustainable development, is not about additional expenses. It's not about additional costs. It's not about additional burden for our economies, for our companies, for our business. It is about investment. It is about making available funds, thinking for the future. Investing in a greener world is guaranteeing the life, is guaranteeing the future for the future generations. And we have a great responsibility. Europe has one of the most advanced legal frameworks in environmental. We have succeeded over the past years in improving the quality of air in our cities, water, waste, chemicals, our Natura 2000 birds and habitats protection is one of the most advanced in the world. And 95% of European citizens believe that the greatest added value of the European Union is its contribution to the environment and its contribution to fight against climate change. But all these efforts will not be enough if we do not continue investing in the future, if we do not think about how we are going to develop our world. And it is true that we have had important successes last year, the Sustainable Development Goals, the Agenda for 2030 Sustainable Development, which will condition the way we develop in the coming years. The Paris COP21 Agreement, which is a very important worldwide commitment, the first universal treaty to reduce greenhouse gas emissions throughout the planet. And I would also like to mention our circular economy strategy, which is about a complete change in the way we grow changing our economic model from a linear model in which you produce, you consume, and you throw away to a more virtuous circle 
where you maximize the value of resources and you minimize waste. But in order to do that, you need means, you need financing. And this is why we want to concentrate our discussions today on green financing. And let, let me be very clear. This is not a one-way relationship whereby the green economy is asking simply for more money. It is about identifying the opportunities and the risks about green growth. We want to explore with you the great opportunities that we have ahead of us in the coming years to improve the life of our citizens, in the citizens, in the countryside, all over the world. We have seen cities now mobilizing investments in buildings, in energy, in water, in waste management, in transport. All this is vital for making our cities fit for the future. In Europe, we are very proud about our green capitals. We have seven green capitals. We also have the Green Leaf Awards for smaller cities. And yesterday or two days ago, we had the urban, uh, the Pact of Amsterdam, which is a very important urban strategy, which is going to lead changes in the cities. We have also seen a lot of funds going to protect nature. Why? because investing in nature not only saves costs, but it is also an investment for the future. But we want to explore with you how can we expand our action? How can we invest across the economy? How can we invest across the planet? Investment in oceans, the blue economy, blue growth, investing in sustainable development, investing in cities, Investments that make it happen. This is the topic of this session. And this is why today's discussion is so important. We have a very exciting program ahead of us. And uh, we want that all the issues that you have are brought up so that we can identify the main problems, the main challenges, but also with your help so that we can also identify the solutions. I want to inform you that our commissioner, Mr. Vela, will, who's hosting this Green Week, will be with us this afternoon. He will do the opening address in the afternoon session. And we are delighted that we have so many representatives from stakeholders, organizations, from the financial community, from the business sectors, from citizens, from regions, all over Europe. I think we are developing gradually increasing awareness in the challenges and opportunities of the green economy. Now, there are two important dimensions of green finance that we are addressing today, and I would like briefly to address them. First of all, extending the availability of green funds. According to the polls from the Commission, the Eurobarometer, uh, European SMEs want to be more engaged in sustainable, in circular economy. 75% of them have said, we would like to be more engaged. But more than a quarter of these companies have difficulties in having access to finance. How do we make finance more accessible for green growth, for the circular economy, for this transition to a decarbonized economy? What are the instruments? What are the funds? What are the possibilities? How, how can we promote better awareness for SMEs and for business in general? I think this is one of the important issues. Should we work on dedicated funds? Should we work with the private sector in financial instruments? And, of course, we have also to address the role of the European Fund for strategic investment. You know the famous Juncker plan, which the Commission, the Juncker Commission launched, and which is an effort to put in Europe additional funds for investment, to compensate the lack of investment. Europe has a need of 500 billion euros 
have a deficit of 500 billion euros in investment compared to pre-crisis level. The European Fund for Strategic Investment is the response of the Commission to this challenge. And I am very pleased that Vice President Katainen himself will come this afternoon. Today the Commission is just now meeting to discuss the midterm review. So he will come directly from the Commission meeting to tell you about where we are. Is the European Fund working? If not, are there going to be changes? And I think he will give us the latest update on the investment fund. But there is another dimension when we talk about green finance, and this is innovation. How can EU programs and funds be more directed to stimulate the needs for financing this transition to the low carbon, resource efficient circular economies? How can we tap better into the trillions of euros managed by private investor? Public funds will not be enough. We need to link the private sector into this area. And how can we green the financial system globally? How can we make it work for the environment? How can re we reorient investment towards sustainable projects and sectors? Everybody is speaking these days about greening the financial system. China, who has been chairing the G20, put green finance as a priority. Throughout the world, financial institutions are looking at how to concentrate investment in this new economy which is coming. How do we minimize the financial risks linked to environmental challenges? How do we ensure this transition to the green economies? So we will also have with us the experts from the Commission in the area of the financial services and capital markets. We have the Capital Markets Union, and I am very pleased to announce also that the Director General of DG FISMA, my friend and colleague Olivier Gerson, will be with us, and he will be discussing together with experts how to develop concrete ideas, how to make the greening of the financial system more operational. We have a full program, we have a full agenda, we are very excited. I am very happy to see so many people here today. And what I would like, I, I want to reassure you, I'm ending my speech, but I would end with a final message. I really hope that our discussions in the next hours can bring forward this agenda and that it can also help to showcase emerging solutions in this important field. The whole of our society, the whole of our planet um, has a big challenge. And the big challenge is to develop in a more sustainable way. If we don't develop in a more sustainable way, it will be impossible to guarantee uh, the life of our future generations. So this is a duty that we have. But at the same time that we are working to improve the quality of life, we also need to develop jobs and growth. Economic development is not incompatible with sustainability. So sustainability and economic development go hand in hand. But to make it happen, we need to finance these solutions. This is why our discussion today is so important. This is why we welcome your presence here. I want also to encourage you to be very active, to, be, uh, to engage in the discussions. And I really hope that by the end of the day, we will have a better idea, not only of the challenges, but also of the success stories and of the solutions that we can put in place together in the coming years. Thank you very much. Now, before we start uh, our day, I just wanted to give you very briefly some logistical advice so you don't get lost in our venue. There's maps posted outside to help you through, but basically the morning is rather simple. We start with the two key questions that were just mentioned. The first is, how um, do we improve access to finance for companies, including SMEs? And the second big question is, how do we get bankers to invest more in, in greener projects. So if you're interested in the first question of access to finance, you can stay right here. And if you're interested in the second question, you will need to move one room down the corridor to your left. 
After that, we have foreseen um, six information sessions. They're very short on various aspects uh, related to green finance. And since uh, this is uh, about green growth, there's some math involved also. So each of these sessions will be repeated four times, which means that if you're fast between the rooms, you can see at least four of the six short sessions. After that, there's lunch provided outside uh, the meeting rooms, and then in the afternoon, we will meet again here for the big um, plenary session. Thank you very much. Okay, so green is the design. Perfect. <laughs> 